What's going on everybody? So we're going to be doing part four of the video. Part three was the liner installation. Not really that exciting, but part four is going to be better. I think it's going to be more informative, which will be installing our pistons. They already come pre-assembled to a degree. Again, we're going to have six pistons. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are going to install our connecting rod bearings. Again, we're going to put all brand new bearings. I'll show you what the piston kit consists of, what it comes with. These are our connecting rods. I'm not going to use the old ones because the engine died due to lack of lubrication. Because of that, you can potentially run into the issue where the connecting rod could be fatigued. It may crack, it may snap, whatever the case is. But again, for the cost, I think it's definitely worth it. Just replace it automatically. Okay, I know if you guys out there want to keep it and uh, maybe save some money, but again, that's up to you. I don't recommend it. So again, we have our six connecting rods our six connecting rod bearings, our six pistons. Now I'm gonna take these apart and I'm gonna show you exactly what comes with it. All right guys, and here we go. So now we have our connecting rod. You're gonna to need to loosen up these bolts. Very simple. Take them all the way out, back them out. Okay, now keep in mind, each connecting rod, this is specific to this rod here, okay? There is a serial number on this side. The serial number really doesn't mean anything, but the reason why it's important is because the actual connecting rod, I'm gonna show you guys, is fractured, okay? Let me show you really quick. You're gonna need a mallet. Just gonna simply tap it, and there we go. Okay, so if you're gonna notice, it's not a smooth edge, it's actually a fractured. So it is specific to this particular rod. Now you could probably switch it up and make a mistake and can use it to another one. I don't recommend that. So again, let's just be specific and what it comes off of, it needs to go back on two, okay? The bolts don't matter, bolts are bolts. Let me show you what comes included with the actual piston. You do get a spray nozzle, you do get the other clip. The nozzle's already installed into the block. Um, I recommend to automatically put the new spray nozzles or the piston cooling nozzles, okay? Here is our piston. Let's go ahead and unwrap that little bad boy. There's nothing else inside there, as you can see. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to make sure I'm recording and giving you guys the best possible picture here. These are our pistons. Now, the pistons actually come pre-assembled to a degree. So you have all your rings already pre-assembled on there. Okay, if you're going to notice, there is an arrow. Okay, the arrow is going to face forward. It's going to go towards the actual fan. Okay, this is on your exhaust side. Now keep in mind, when you assemble this, the side that has the little cutout, okay, again, that's on the exhaust side, that's gonna go here. So that cutout is gonna go down and it's gonna go to this side of the connecting rod. Okay, let me show you that really quick, okay? So again, this side goes to this side right here, okay? So let's go ahead and get our connecting rod installed and and uh, matched up with our piston. Now what I like to use really quick is a little bit of this assembly lube from Lucas. Um, I'm sure you can use, I think the book actually calls for gear oil, but I like to use this is actually a really good product. It's nice, it's sticky, um, lets the actual wrist pin slide in and out without any issues. Okay, and again, the more lube, the better. I know it sounds kind of weird to say that, but again, the more lube, the better, because when you're gonna fire this engine up, it is gonna be pretty dry. So, you know, be generous with it, spread it around, okay? Let's go ahead and get our pin in. I'm gonna show you something really quick on the retaining, the snap ring or the, yeah, I guess you can call it a snap ring, okay? The snap ring has to go one of two ways. The book calls for it to go at the 12 o'clock position or the six o'clock position, okay? There's no other way to go about it. Just do it right. I always like to put mine on the south end. That way it goes towards the connecting rod. So what you're gonna wanna do is just simply, you can lay it down at this point, okay? Get your pliers. You're gonna wanna go ahead and compress that snap ring down a little bit. It's gonna have its groove. Oops, make sure it goes in the groove. That's it, okay? So again, this is gonna go down towards the connecting rod. Flip it over, you're gonna see the other side is gonna be exactly the same. And that's all I'm gonna do right now. I'm not gonna compress the actual ring. 
Sorry for the noise, guys, but we gotta work and try to record at the same time. That's just the nature of it, okay? Your bearing, your connecting rod bearing, they're all the same. Let me show you the boxes. Okay, same part numbers, it doesn't matter. These are all standard. So what you're gonna wanna do here, now if you're gonna notice that there are two types, okay? One's gonna be this nice shiny silver one. The other one's gonna have this little darker metal coating, okay? There we go. So let's go ahead and get that installed. And again, you're gonna see that you can only install it one way. You're gonna notice the groove on here. Give me one sec. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to, had to turn that down for a minute. We're uh, had a little bit of interruption. So again, you've got two bearings, okay? One is gonna be the upper piece that's gonna go here on your, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There we go. That's gonna go on the upper part of the connecting rod. Lower piece, now again, these are gonna have their little cutouts or their grooves, okay? Make sure each one goes where it's supposed to go. Um, real simple deal. So once you get that in, we're not gonna put any lube or anything like that. And again, look for the flat side. I don't know if you can see that, there we go. Just meet them up nice and easy. You're gonna run the bolts in. Um, and again, we're gonna do this entire thing through all six of them. Once I do that, we're gonna show you how I install them, how we compress the rings. Now the rings have to be um, set up a certain way, so keep that in mind. All right, these are your different rings on the piston. They all have to be clocked at a certain direction. I'll show you that in a second. But right now, again, we're gonna continue this. We're gonna do all of our connecting rods. So bear with me, let's get this going. And we'll get these all installed. Okay guys, like I was mentioning earlier in the video, the piston, the piston head, the connecting rod, they all have to go in a certain way. So if you're looking at the top of the piston, there you go. This is the part with the indentation. Those are the snap rings. I apologize for the lighting, but I'm trying to record and kind of get you guys the best information possible. And if you're looking at the actual assembly, okay, again, here's the top of the piston, there's the indentation, and then this is the piece that it actually connects with. Okay, so again, it's gonna be the side with the longer end. So this is gonna be your exhaust, and you're gonna notice on the top of the piston, and I showed you that earlier again in the video, there's an arrow pointing forward. Okay, that's gonna go forward towards the fan or the front of the engine or the engine block. Okay, however you wanna look at it. These are the piston rings, okay? They do have to be set up. That, that doesn't sound right at all. They do need to be set up in a certain way 
okay so they need to be their orientation if you're looking at it okay the top ring a middle ring b bottom ring c so if you're looking at it your fire ring compression ring and your oil control ring okay so the a is obviously on top so that's where essentially you need to clock it and if i'm not mistaken that's where you want so just think of it that way again a little 12 o'clock seven uh let's say eight o'clock and let's say over here something at the four o'clock position so that's essentially what you're going to want to do and you're going to want to do that with every single one okay it's very important um so that's pretty much what the book is going to show you i'm going to go downstairs and we're going to actually start uh, showing you the process that i do as far as um, how we're going to compress the actual rings how we're going to install it into the liner and at the very end of the video i'm going to show you how to torque everything okay everything does need to be torqued uh, so that's pretty much it for the book let's go down there and actually take a look and get this going okay guys so you get the idea we have piston number one two and again it doesn't matter which one you're going to install them into it's all the same so we already have two assembled i'm not going to do a whole video on all six uh, but you get the idea. So we're going to speed up to the next part so you can get more content and you don't have to watch a 30 minute video. Okay guys, so here we go. We have our pistons. We're going to assemble our pistons as far as our rings are concerned. This is the way everything is going to come to you. Everything is going to be assembled as far as your rings will be installed. You are going to have to position the rings. Our pistons are installed to our connecting rods. We already have our bearings. I showed you that already. These are your bolts. All you're gonna to need to do is get some clean motor oil. Okay, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just down the threads, that's it. That's all you're gonna to wanna to do. What you're also gonna to need to do is have some assembly lube, grease, whatever works for you. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to do that with your connecting rod bearings. Now, very simple, like I've showed you guys on the uh, main bearing video, you just wanna get some, some of that and just simply spread it, okay? Again, the more the better, I think so. Um, you're not gonna hurt it by adding more. You're just gonna simply be lubing everything up so when you start the engine, it'll be nice and protected, okay? Which to me is more important because, as you guys know, these things are not cheap, okay? I mean, one mistake or two mistakes and you're gonna have to rebuild it all over again or you're gonna have to rebuild it for your customer. So keep that in mind, okay? I'm just giving you a little bit of uh, my two cents. Now, that's what you're gonna to wanna to do before you actually assemble it. Oh, let's go set up the liners. Uh, give me a second, let me grab this. I'm gonna head over there. And the liners are already installed. Let me get a little better camera angle here, okay? Liners are installed. And I wanna show you something. This is what I do again, this is what I was taught you're gonna get clean motor oil and you're gonna simply just apply it to the inside of the liner, okay? You're gonna do that as much as you can and you're gonna to wanna to do that to all six liners. So again, all six liners, you're gonna add clean motor oil. So this way, when you install your piston, okay, your piston assembly, everything is nice, it's lubed and everything will just slide into place. And again, it doesn't hurt it at all. Um, done this on multiple occasions with multiple DD15s, Series 60s, whatever, and it works just fine. So again, clean motor oil, the same one I use with the oil changes, um, whatever works for you, whatever brand works for you, that's fine. And that's pretty much it. So again, gotta make sure your liner is lubed. Now let's go get our pistons, um, our pistons, the rings compressed. We're gonna install everything and let's go okay, from there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this compressed. It helps when you have two people, I think, but if you're doing this solo, I'm sure that's gonna work as well. Nice dive in. All right, so I hope you guys can see that really well. I'm gonna position the piston ring so this way we have everything going where it needs to go. Ah, bear with me here, guys. Déjame poner esa posición. No tienes que abrirle más. All right, guys. So this is where it gets fun. It gets messy. And again, you're going to use clean motor oil. I think the book says you can actually kind of dip the entire head of the piston into oil. Um, I've never done that. I just simply get clean motor oil. And again, I am going to apply it to the sides of all the rings. Now use plenty of it. Um, it does get messy, so 
just keep that in mind. Hope you guys can see that. So again, feel free to turn it. Uh, this is a great thing to do because if it gets binding or if it binds anywhere, you're at least gonna be aware of it, okay? So if you're looking at the top of the piston, again, this is the arrow, this is the little indentation. You're gonna to wanna to start at the top ring, which is A. Okay, this is gonna be our A. I don't know if you can see that there, bear with me, guys. Hold on, there we go. This is our A, again. Our B is gonna be over here at this position, again, based on what the book is telling us, and our C is gonna be down here. So you have C, B, A. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and compress the rings. Okay guys, so I'm gonna actually change the audio on this. Right now, with this type of setup, with the ring being compressed, or the rings being compressed, this type of setup actually will not work on what I'm doing because the liners have a ring on top, which is a carbon scraper. Now it'll actually get stuck. I'm gonna show you how I made the mistake and the right tools that you're gonna need so that you can do the job right. Again, what I'm doing here is actually not going to work. You're gonna need a different setup. I'm gonna show you that setup. I'm gonna show you what I am using to do the job right. All right guys, so check this out. This is me actually using the compression tool on this type of liner. Now again, it will not work. Uh, it is going to get stuck right there because the groove of the ring or the carbon scraper. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Now this is completely wrong, but I'm gonna show you the right way to do it and the right tools to do it. So again, this actually is completely incorrect and I learned this kind of the hard way, so I had to do it the right way. But anyway, I'm showing you again what not to do and I'm gonna show you the right way in a sec. Okay guys, so check this out. This particular style of liner, this is on the GHD 14, so it should be about 2015 or newer. It's going to have the carbon ring or the carbon scraping ring that goes right here on each liner, okay? The problem with that is when you're gonna go install your piston, this ring has to be removed. This will not allow the piston to go through because it's narrow, it's a little more, um, I guess you can call it tapered. It's not the same diameter, okay? So what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to have a tool like this. This will allow you almost like an adapter allows you to simply install your piston assembly straight through without having any issues okay this is a completely flush now if you're looking at this one here it's not flush this actually comes out a little bit more and this is a little more recessed so again will not allow the piston to seat properly or go in at all actually so you're gonna have to remove this like the way we did here you're gonna to need to install this. Now this tool itself, let me move it around really quick. It's actually not that expensive. I thought it was gonna be a lot more expensive, so I had to pick one up. Um, kind of learned the hard way yesterday. I was trying to trying to force shit, and uh, well, that didn't work very well. So there's the part number, as you can see there. Um, that's the latest and greatest part number. It may change here and there. You could probably find it somewhere else uh, online, but it's gonna be about 200 bucks just to give you a ballpark figure. So again, Looking straight down, our crank is in position to receive, so I'm going to install piston one, and I'm gonna do piston number six. So let me get everything set up. Uh, let me go and show you what I have. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? More good stuff? Ah, oh, wonderful. Oh, easy peasy. Thanks, man, have a good one. Okay guys, so here we're gonna use the right tool to compress the rings. I'm gonna show you, this is the tool that you're gonna need. Uh, it's actually pretty inexpensive. I purchased mine from Valley Power out here in Southern California. There is another tool that you're gonna need to adapt 
to it and that actually sits on top of the liner. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but this tool actually works really well. I like it much better than the first one we're using. And let's go show you what it looks like when we put it all together, one sec. All right guys, a little bit darker in here, so hopefully this will help. And again, guy on top is gonna to go ahead and install it. Okay guys, as you're gonna notice, now the camera's not really focusing, but what you wanna do is again, as the, as the connecting rod is going to drop down into place, make sure again, you avoid hitting the spray nozzle or the piston cooling nozzle. Uh, once you do that, again, it's gonna go, it's gonna drop right onto the crank. You're gonna put everything back together, put your cap on. Again, make sure it's facing the right direction. Put your bolts on and then you're gonna go All from right guys, there. So if you can see that, that is how I mark the rod bearings or the bolts on the caps. My yellow is my starting point and my white is my ending point, which is 180 degree torque turn. And I do the same thing for every single one. Okay, I don't automatically guess. I don't take a chance on it. I wanna make sure everything is done right. So all the way down, we're gonna do that. So again, this will be my starting point, 180 degree torque turn. So I'm gonna start a little bit on the left, on the right. So again, evenly so that everything is getting tightened down correctly. I don't want something where you're gonna overdo it on one end and then try to compensate on the other end and then potentially you could find something or make a mistake and then you have possibly engine failure. So what again, uh, what I do is I mark everything. 85 foot pounds is your first step. Second step is 180 degree torque turns. After I did my 85, I automatically rotate the engine. I wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth or as smooth as possible so I don't have any issues. Um, if I have any issues, obviously that's a great time to address it. So we're all done there. We're gonna torque it all down to the 180 foot pounds. I'm sorry, 180 degree torque turn. Okay, that's the second step. And then we'll be all set. Again, guys, if you like the video, please uh, like, give it a thumbs up. Let me know, hey, you like it. Let me know what you don't like. You know, I, I, I don't mind growing and changing and, and adapting to what's, uh, to what's out there. So again, guys, thank you for watching the video. Have a great day.